today I'm here to talk to you guys about humic humix and the benefits they can bring to your farm and why top crops so excited to have black earth as part of our lineup of plant and soil health products. So first off, what are humics or humic acids? Um, I talked to many, I talked to many growers, and uh, you don't ex sometimes you don't exactly you've heard about humics, but you don't exactly know their functions or how to utilize them or incorporate them into your program. So we can start with that. Humic substances are the natural humidified remains of decay matter or decayed biomatter, sorry. The progression of humic substances takes a very long time. And what begins as a small molecule of dead plant material gets larger and forms fulvic acid. And then larger and forms humic acid until you get coal, which is just straight carbon chains with no chemical activity. While both have the word acid in their names, they are not necessarily acids in the sense of sulfuric acid or anything like that. Their molecular structure makes them quite reactive. So in the soil, they react with a variety of different substances such as minerals and metals. While all humic acids um, generally share certain characteristics, there's very different, or there's different various types and forms. Humic acids can vary from site to site fairly significantly in their concentrations. There's many different sources of materials and methods used to extract humics. Today we'll focus on humulite exclusively, exclusively, sorry, because that's the one that's found in Alberta and is the form of humic substances used in our black earth products. Humic substance can be broke down into three categories, but are all important components of humus. So we're gonna go over those three right now. So we talked about humic substance and where that comes from, but let's break that down a little more. Inside humic substances are three categories of humates, fulvic acid, which you might've heard of, uh, humic acid, which you likely heard of, and then human, which you may or may not have. But all three of those make up humic substances. So um, what are the differences between fulvic, humic, and human? So for starters, fulvic acids are the fraction of the humus that is soluble in water under all, P under all pH conditions, unlike humic acid. So it has a lower molecular weight than humic acid, which means that it's made of smaller particles that are better able to penetrate through cell walls of plants. And as they do that, they can bring in uh, vital nutrients, making fulvic a great candidate for foliar applications, as well as standalone applications or in conjunction with a foliar fertilizer. They're also good in furrow, uh, due to their ability to penetrate those rigid uh, roots cell walls. So then moving on to humic acid, humic acids are the fraction of humus that is soluble in water, except for conditions more acidic than a pH of two. So humic acids have several benefits. They improve soil structure, increase water retention during periods of drought, prevent leaching in sandy soils, uh, they increase aeration and water filtration in clay soils, they also increase the CEC which leads to improved nutrient uptake, and they also act as a salinity buffer for excess sodium for plants. And then uh, Lastly, you've got human, which is the fraction of humus that's not soluble in water at any pH, and it cannot be extracted with a strong base. Uh, it's very high in carbon, and it acts as a great nutrient hold. So 
So having soil that is rich with humus means that it's black, it holds water, yet is well drained. It's loose and freeable, allowing plant roots to grow unrestricted. Soils rich in humus contain many organic nutrients that break down slowly into a form that's plant available. They will outproduce soil low in humus every time. So humic acids are a key component of humus. So they benefit, so the benefits of applying humics to a low content soil would be to mirror the benefits of having a soil that's rich with humus. And we can just go over some of the agronomic benefits that humic acids bring. So humic acids boost microbial activity. The carbon in the humic feeds the so or feeds the microbial activity in the soil, which is important for breakdown of pesticides and pollutants, nutrient cycling, disease suppression, and water movement. By stimulating the soil's microorganisms, it causes more efficient crop residue breakdown. Humic acids are also effective means to fight against soil erosion. This is achieved by improving the soil structure and by enhancing root systems and optimizing plant health. Humic acids act as a pH buffer. So it will regulate not only acidic, but also alkaline soils. Under alkaline conditions, humic acts as a natural chelator for metals to promote their uptake by plant roots. They dissolve calcium bond phosphates and other nutrients and trace minerals for or form complexes with them and make them available to the plant in usable forms. Humic acid in the root zone equate to higher germination rates as well as faster emergence and more seed vigor. Having a healthy root zone for your plant gives or having a healthy root zone for your plant will give it its best start. So humic acids will also increase water retention, which means that your plants have the moisture when it's needed. Black earth humulite holds up to seven times its weight in water and is, and it's looking like a lot of us could use a little bit of that moisture this year because it seems to be really dry so far. Um, humic helps to increase the cation exchange capacity, which affects many aspects of your soil chemistry. It's used as a measure of soil fertility as it indicates the capacity of your soil to retain several nutrients in plant available form. This goes hand in hand with its ability to be a great chelating agent, uh, making minerals easily absorbed by the plant. So then if we talk about soil testing, um, this test is used to show the changes in soil based on management decisions. So as you can see, a fall application of 200 pounds per acre of black earth humulite AG has resulted in moving the needle on their soil health calculation from 8.5 to 9.7. Tracking the biological activity of your soil over time tells you, or sorry, it indicates the availability or the availability of plant nutrients to your so or in your soil. The Haney test goes beyond other soil tests and tells you how bio biologically active your soil is or how alive your soil is. It uh, examines total organic carbon and total organic nitrogen to determine a carbon to nitrogen ratio. Soil microbes breathe in oxygen and release carbon dioxide the way humans do, and the higher CO2 levels indicate the more microbial activity. So we talked about we talked about the how humics come to life, but we didn't really talk about the where. So humics obviously exist naturally in the soil, but 
they are created through the humidification of carbon and usually food or sorry found associated in lignite coal deposits which then fall under the term lenardite which has become a blanket term for most of the humic acid deposits in the world lenardite has been produced over millions of years in the same way that coal the uh, same way as coal it contains all the natural products of prehistoric plant life so there are many reserves around the world of Leonardite deposits. We'll just talk about They can vary in size, concentration, and quality. Major sources of these deposits are found in Alberta, North Dakota, and New Mexico. Those are the North American ones anyways. And however, the humic acid deposit found in Alberta is exclusively referred to humolite due to its unique composition and high quality. Let's talk about what makes the humolite high quality. So what sets it apart from all the other Leonardites? Uh, data indicates that humolite is quite different than other deposits as far as purity goes. The reason for that is that it came from a poorly drained freshwater source versus a saltwater source. The ash content is much lower in humolite over other Leonardites, um, which are all things to consider when looking for a humate product. Quality of the material will have a direct effect on the results you achieve in the field. So ask yourself, does it come from fresh or saltwater deposits? What's the ash content? Also something to look for is a, um, what's the cation exchange capacity? Also when looking for a quality or quality humic product, oops. Sorry, um, things to look for is their testing practices. Currently, there's no standard uh, standardized method for analyzing humic and fulvics uh, for the regulatory agencies. So the percentage of humic acid content is a big deciding factor. Not only does it indicate or dictate the strength of application and the method, it impacts your results that you'll see in the field. However, depending on the test method used to come up with those marketable numbers, um, certain methods can mislead the consumer into thinking that the percentage of humic acid is higher than it actually is. So many liquid humic, li sorry, many liquid humic and fulvic acid products contain additives like lignosulfates, which can mimic humic and fulvic and artificially elevate te uh, test numbers, sorry. So I wanted to just show you guys like the different uh, methods for testing. And uh, why Black Earth holds their products to the highest level of accuracy and standard when it comes to testing their products. Having an understanding of various testing methods can be also a good place to start when looking to add humix to your product. So the first um, one that I'll go over is the color metric method. It's a simple qualitative test for humix. So it measures the quality, not the quantity. And currently it's the most popular and widely accepted method um, as far as testing goes. And it's used for registration and labeling in most of US and Canada. Color metric analysis is a fast and convenient method uh, compared to other testing methods, um, basically all you need is a color meter and it calculates the concentration based on the intensity of the light that passes through the solution. Unfortunately though, this test is not always the most accurate. It typically gives higher humic content uh, numbers than other methods. It's also um, 
it can't distinguish between humic and fulvic content either. So the next one that we'll talk about is the CDFA or the California Department of Food and Agriculture. And uh, it's more effective than the color metric test or method, um, but it doesn't account for fulvic uh, and it does not adequately account for ash content either. So products that are high in ash can appear um, lower in humic content and is currently used in only California and Oregon. So it's not really something that applies here, but it's another method. And then uh, last but definitely not least, we have the HPTA method, um, which is the Humic Product Trade Association method, which is currently considered the most accurate testing method to determine humic and fulvic content. It's quantitative, it's a quantitative analysis and has been uh, approved now and adopted uh, by the international standards, which is why Black Earth uses this method for testing on all of their products. So now let's talk a little bit more about the products. So Black Earth has a wide range of Canadian made products that are designed for everything from agriculture to industrial applications. Oops. So Black Earth is committed to science and testing and is um, the reason for that is so that we no longer have to be, we don't have to choose between responsible environment stewardship and the bottom line. Black Earth products are available in various forms, including granular liquids and dry solubles, and several variations of coarseness and concentration um, for different applications, rates, and methods. So we can start with um, Black Earth's liquid carbon, which is formerly known as Active 12. It's a ready to use extracted liquid humic acid containing 7.6% humic and 1.97 fulvic. Its ideal use uh, is for liquid starter applications, top dressing, uh, injection through irrigation water, or foliar applications. Then we've got uh, Black Earth Liquid Carbon HC, formerly Active 24. Uh, it's a concentrated extracted liquid humic. It contains 15.3% humic, 3.57 fulvic. Liquid Carbon HC is a highly concentrated liquid they can easily be diluted to desired levels. Um, and then its ideal uses are the same as the liquid carbon. So liquid starter applications, top dressing, injection, and foliars. It's very similar to the liquid carbon. It's just higher in concentration. And then moving on, we've got Black Earth's Humalite AG4, formerly known as the Active ADAG. Uh, it is the organic coarse grade humic granule that they offer, containing 64% humic and 3.4 fulvic. Uh, the large coarse granule size allows for easy, easy handling, works well in a wide range of conditions and soil types. The large granule allows for slow release of nutrients into the soil and it's most effective, or sorry, it's most cost effective for high rate applications. It's ideal for broadcasting and can be used in furrow. The next up we will talk about Black Earth's Humazin products, um, which are a set of premium products that came out, or they came out with last year. 
We'll start with the Humans in Alpha Plus, which is a uh, liquid humic designed for convenience. Um, the extraction method used in Alpha Plus isolates the fulvic and uh, most of the bioactive humic acids contained in humolite. So the result is a potent liquid humolite. It is compatible with a wide range of liquid fertilizers, including phosphoric acid-based starters. And due to its potency, alpha has lower recommended rates, so it makes it easier for handling and logistics. Um, it can be used as a seed treat, it, in furrow, banded with fertilizers, irrigation, and then foliar applications as well. And then lastly, we've got the Humazin Magna. Humus in Magna Plus is the revolutionary humic fulvic product delivering unique properties of humolite in a durable fertilizer compatible granule. Um, it's partially soluble for rapid release and availability in any soil type. It is effective at low rates. It delivers soil amending benefits of humic acid and the chelating functionality of fulvic in one single application. It is compatible with dry fertilizers, including urea, so it can be incorporated into a blend as well, or used as a standalone application. It's suitable for broadcasting as well as in furrow. So that concludes my, my information part of the day. Um, anybody that has any questions, feel free to, uh, It'll be our top crop team that answer them. So feel free to turn your mic on and ask away. I just wanted to add um, to everybody listening, um, any of the liquid products, any of the liquid humic products, I've, I've done quite a bit of trialing over the last probably eight or nine years on liquid humic products. Um, one thing to be cognizant of, if you're using liquid humic as a top dress product, if you do not add in a product um, like 2075 or any other kind of foliar nutrition product, it isn't very beneficial um, to the plant itself as it doesn't convert from vegetative to seed growth. So if you don't give it the nutrients to go with the humic, you've essentially created a monster just growing a big plant. It will not set seed well. Um, in some trials, I actually seen it go backwards if you're just using a liquid humic as a top dress in a foliar situation to not use a nutritional product with it. Well, uh, just the one thing that I really want to stress, you know, when I'm having conversations to, with people about humic acids and, and what we're offering compared to other products, I think it, we can't stress enough that, you know, I'll use, I'll use the liquid carbon as an example. Um, we have a direct competitor who also claims that they have a 12% um, liquid as well. And, and I think the importance of the HPTA test is that, you know, while our product might, you know, come at a 20% cost increase, based on the most accurate testing, we're offering over 7.5% humic versus less than half a percent. And I think we can't stress that enough that not all humic products are the same. And you have to be really careful and investigate what you're actually getting. And that's all I really wanted to add. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Okay, so let's talk about recommended soil testing to decide if it's needed. Scott, the answer to that question, Courtney, I, I, I think is it's always needed. Um, one big thing humic acid and fulvic acid will do in your soil is help, um, help put carbon back into the plant. Um, as that is a nutrient that we've been using in, in farming for hundreds of years, never really worried about putting back in. If you look at a soil sample and see low um, organic matter, um, yes, definitely. Humic acid and humic products are going to be a big benefit to that crop and big benefit to that soil. Um, it is going to help rectify some pH issues and some salinity issues. Um, but whether you need to look at a soil sample to see if it's needed, um, it, it's always needed. There's, 
it's it's always it, you're always going to see a benefit out of it. Perfect. And I think um, it's important to just keep your soil testing up to date to give you an overall picture of where you're at. So even when you do use it, you want to just keep, I think, keeping those soil tests as accurate and as up to date as possible is uh, just a good practice. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, does anybody else have any more questions? Courtney, this is Lee. Hi, Lee. Say, I, I just want to add, you're all really right on as far as, as humic goes. Humic is very beneficial. It has like 83 micronutrients all together in humic. Um, it is a great uh, uh, product to build soluble carbon in your soil. Um, Jay and I have been researching this for the last five, six years. <clears throat> and when a person does a Haney test as far as finding out what soluble carbon or how much soluble carbon you have in the soil, you need, you need to, to have at least 500 parts per million of soluble carbon in that soil to give that plant the ability to achieve its, its best yield. So humic acid, fulvic acid, humic probably more maybe than fulvic will increase that solubility. Uh, there's only one other thing as far as, as uh, 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 humic acid is concerned. We have done some tests in Idaho on some potato ground uh, where they've applied a couple gallon, <clears throat> excuse me, of fulvic in the fall and worked it in. And then they applied a couple uh, gallon in the spring and worked it in before they planted potatoes. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and they went ahead and got a potato crop in that, uh, in that uh, ground where they applied the, the humic acid, where it was an acid base and, and, and or I'm sorry, an alkali base, and it had the salts. And, it, and what humic does is ties up those salts in any soils that you have that, that white look out there, it'll tie up those salts forever. Now, not to say that there isn't more humic or more salts come up to the surface, but if you keep applying humic, you can turn those soils into a productive soil. Perfect. Thanks, Lee. Welcome. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to contact your, I know we've got some dealers on here, but uh, your dealer or your sales rep. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming today. Hopefully you guys found, took some, learned something new today and uh, we're happy to have you. <laughs>